Stay away from this fucking bundle. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. Fanatical just keeps chugging along. Today we have the Enchanted Bundle. Ooh, the Enchanted Bundle? Are you guys ready for enchantment? <laughs> oh god, <laughs> let's take a look at the games. Siberia 3. Siberia 3, an automaton without a plan. Garfield Kart. <laughs> Garfield Kart. Agatha Christie, the ABC Murders. Yesterday Origins. Moto Racer 4. Toki. Fort Boyard. Curse the Eye of Isis. And Return to Mysterious Island. For $5? Oh god, this is... It's kind of a load of trash. I'm just gonna tell you straight. There's one game that I like in this entire bundle, and I'll let you guess what it is. Maybe one and a half games I like. <laughs> Maybe three, if we're being really, really generous. But there's like a lot of point and click and a lot of racing stuff, which I don't generally get too into. So, I don't know, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this one. But we shall delay no longer, and we'll jump right in and talk about each of these games individually. <sighs> Siberia 3. Wow, this game kind of looks graphically pleasing, and there have been three iterations, so I'm going to go ahead and presume that this game isn't complete trash. <laughs> You've been rused. You've all been rused. This game is a fucking dumpster fire. It's so bad that I'm not even quite sure where I should start. The first thing that you'll probably notice are the controls. You'll need to swap back and forth between a mouse and keyboard and a gamepad in order to feel like you're operating properly. It just feels like the developers couldn't decide what to use. So they just switched it back and forth at their leisure. Ugh, what a bunch of idiots. Then, there's the super fun mechanic of clicking an object and dragging your mouse around to get the stupid whatever it is activated. Can you please just let me click the damn thing? My carpal tunnel's already developing. This isn't a puzzle, it's fucking torture. I've never played a game that caused me physical pain until meeting Siberia 3, and not just because of the carpal tunnel. The story is so mind-numbing that it makes me wonder how anyone got through the first two entries of this series. The animations are laughably bad, and if all that weren't enough, you can't skip cutscenes. And trust me, you will want to. The voice acting is... <laughs> Absolutely pitiable. Give me lots of junk, or Smith cannot work with Forge. Did you finally weather a cutscene and decide that you've had enough and want to quit? Well, guess what? You can't manually save. Auto save only. So if you quit right after the cutscene, guess what? When you boot it back up, you're gonna have to watch that fucking cutscene again. Oh, this game is cripplingly bad. Literally. Siberia 3, automaton without a plan. Maybe this bit of Siberia 3 DLC will make everything better. I mean, there's a piece of DLC that made Duke Nukem Forever almost salvageable, right? Wrong. This isn't really a game DLC. It's a DLC, 90% of which consists of those horrible fucking cutscenes that I spent the majority of my time in Siberia 3 trying to autosave around so I didn't have to watch their unskippable garbage again. There is less than 30 minutes of additional gameplay here. This is the sort of predatory DLC that I really just want to cast into the fires of Mount Doom, never to be seen again. But let's be honest, do we really even need to make the journey to Mordor? There's nobody out there that's buying Siberia 3 outside of these bundles. Oh god, at least I hope there isn't. What a fucking terrifying thought. That is going to keep me up tonight. If I were you, and I really decided I wanted this bundle, I'd post my Siberia 3 keys on Reddit or Twitter so that it can get snapped up by a fucking Steam key bot. At least then you can rest a little easier knowing that some stupid botter now has Siberia 3 and its god-awful DLC in their library. Serves them right. Stained forever! <sighs> Garfield Kart. <laughs> Have you ever wanted Mario Kart to just be a single-player game? Yeah, me either. Okay, okay. But how about if they took all of your favorite Mario characters and replaced them with the most inane and boring characters that we could possibly find in the Sunday Comics page? Still not doing it for you, huh? Okay, well, I think I understand the problem. 
It's that only those with the highest of IQs can possibly hope to grasp the genius of Garfield Kart. Garfield Kart is the one game I've encountered that truly represents the duality between man and beast, of cognition and non-existence, of light and dark. Not only have these fantastic developers brought us a message of hope, but they've done so with our favorite characters delivering it. Characters like Fat Cat, Penis Person, Dumb Dog, Vagina Person, Transgender Cat, Vagina Cat, Trash Rodent, and Ugly Garfield. This game was once suggested to me because I played Rocket League, and that suggestion, oh, it just couldn't have been any more correct. It took the fast-paced frenetic energy of Rocket League and paired it with the laid-back obesity of a diabetic feline, once again illustrating the duality that is the cycle of life and death. Okay, I, I think this shtick is over. The game's a pile of trash, okay? Not Siberia 3 levels of trash, but still definitely not worth considering unless it's for the extremely stale meme. Moving on. Agatha Christie, The ABC Murders. Oh, great. Just what we needed to turn this bundle around. A point and click mystery game, yay! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me, fanatical? <laughs> Just when I was starting to have high hopes for this event. <sighs> well, I'll try not to let my personal bias cloud my judgment too much. This is a good point and click. If you're an 80 year old lady who hasn't missed an episode of Murder, she wrote. Okay, oops, sorry, sorry. Let me try again. There are branching pathways, which is an interesting choice for a game based on a book, so even if you've read the book, you won't know what happens. Though you probably won't remember anything aside from your autonomous functions if you're enough of a lobotomite to choose an Agatha Christie scrawling. Oh, oops. God damn, this is hard. Okay, let's try it again. This game has puzzles. The puzzles are okay. See, I can do this. It's just too bad that you might not have the patience to get to them because the main character moves about as quick as frozen diarrhea. Dang. Well, that, that's not as bad as the last ones, I think. We're improving. <laughs> uh, the cell shaded graphics are... Nice. Although they would have been a lot nicer if they actually used it to animate the character's stupid faces. Okay, fuck it. I give up. The book was more engaging than the game, okay? Think about that for a second. I'd actually choose... An Agatha Christie book. Jesus. But at least it's still better than Siberia 3. Yesterday Origins. <laughs> it's another point and click. <laughs> Please just stop, okay? <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> what? What did you say? I might actually like this one. <laughs> Don't try and get my hopes up. Just leave me to wallow in my misery and waste away in peace, would you? <laughs> it's the best game in the bundle so far. <laughs> you promise? I mean, I guess that isn't saying much, but... I, I could give it a look. <sighs> the story here is... actually not a complete travesty. It deals with immortality and occult rituals even more than Garfield Cart does. I really like that kind of dark edge to stories, even if that means I have to point and click my way through them. Some of the puzzles here seem to come out of left field and not have a ton of logic behind them, but they're still doable through some blind stabbing in the dark. The controls are geared towards a gamepad rather than a mouse and keyboard, and that somehow makes the act of pointing and clicking just a bit more tolerable. The character designs do look weird as fuck, but I like how expressive they are. It almost brings me back toward... What is this feeling? Am I actually starting to like them? Oh. Oh god. Say it ain't so! The final nail in the coffin is that this game will highlight hotspots on the screen. So hunting for stupid little pixels is a thing of the past. This game is certainly working some sort of dark magic. Come on, Dayton. Stop pointing. Stop clicking for god's sake! It's got a hold of me now. Oh no! Moto Racer 4. Look, you guys, look! It's a racing game. 
It's really a racing game, and it isn't fucking Garfield Kart. It's a real racing game. I mean, it's not Grid. This is not even close to Grid, but it is something that's almost actually playable. I say almost because the sensitivity for the bikes is way too high. Whether you're on a mouse and a keyboard or a gamepad, you're going to be banging from side to side like a trailer trash Florida whorehouse in a hurricane. Maybe if I just open the controls, I can adjust the sensitivity so it won't constantly be overcompensating like this. Oh, great. There's no fucking settings. Can't adjust the sensitivity, can't rebind any keys. This just gets worse and worse. Well, the racing and the controls are pretty shit, but at least the visuals are nice, right? They sure are, if you can get them to load properly. Poor optimization means that the textures take forever to load and the game continues to run like shit. But one nice thing I could say is, at least the tracks are pretty well designed. If you can enjoy them despite the truckload of other garbage piled on top of that one nugget of hope. Ugh. Toki! Holy mother of god. This game is legitimately okay. This is the one game. I pointed out at the beginning of the bundle and I said that's, that's the decent one. Well this is it, we're here, hooray! I mean it's not fantastic. It's not groundbreaking, but at this point, I'm going to fucking take whatever I can get. Toki's about a monkey that kills things by spitting on him. I mean, he's not actually a monkey. He's a man. But the man was turned into a monkey when an evil wizard stole his girlfriend. I'm sorry. I'm still just a little bit frazzled. I've been going through a lot today. This was an arcade title once upon a time, so it keeps that sort of brutality. One hit deaths, and a game over means going all the way back to the beginning. While it's certainly technically an action-adventure platformer, to me it feels more like a gigantic memory game. Like if you forget too many traps or pitfalls, then you're going back to the starting line before you can blink. My daughter was actually watching me play this one, and she was shocked at how brutal it was. Six or seven levels of struggling, and I finally lost all my lives. She said, Daddy, you really have to start all over? I looked her right in the eyes and said, I don't have to fucking do anything and promptly alt F forward. This is a clunky feeling platformer, but the hand-drawn art style and sheer old-school brutality do a lot to ingratiate itself to me. I don't have any nostalgia for this monkey man, but he still managed to somehow hold up, though I doubt that he will do so for future generations very long. Still, given the offerings of this bundle so far, cling to this game like your fucking life depended on it. I'll miss you, Toki. <laughs> We're going diving right back into the trash. With Fort Boyard. You know, when I start digging through bundle games, there's always one thing that's on my mind. I'm always thinking to myself, gosh, I hope one of these games is based on a French game show from the early 90s. Why? Oh, because I'm a total and complete masochist, of course. Maybe this game is based on the UK version? Who really gives a shit? This isn't Family Double Dare, so I can't really find it in myself to give a damn. You have to complete challenges to get some keys, to get some weird wizard's treasure. The graphics look like they sprung right out of the early 2000s, and the animation is downright scary. There is no voice acting over the cutscenes, which, oh, that's probably the biggest blessing in disguise ever. But somewhere along the lines, they decided that it would really increase the quality of this immaculate game if player characters talked during the challenges. The riveting dialogue has a huge range. Sometimes they'll say, yes, and woohoo, while other times they'll shout, aw, or oh no. If that isn't the full range, then I don't know what is. And it sounds even better because you can truly feel that the voice actor didn't give a single squirt of piss. They came into the recording booth that sounds like a trash can, mumbled a few stupid lines, snatched a check, and got the fuck out. If only we could all be so lucky. Curse the Eye of Isis. I'm gonna give this one just a little bit of leeway, mostly because it was actually released in 2003. And also because all of this negativity can't be doing any favors for my mental health or my blood pressure. This game doesn't innovate or do much of anything interesting, but when settled among the rest of these turds, Curse feels like the hot girl at the party for once in its life, but only because the rest of her friends are fucking water buffalo. You know where I'm coming from, right? It's a tale as old as time. I do actually like the settings in this game. They have a bit of creep factor to them, 
but the safe and forgettable story and blank characters do curse no favors in maintaining that vibe. I'd compare it to the original Resident Evil, but the original Resident Evil still held up despite the huge amount of jank involved. And yes, there are zombies in this game, but considering how poorly the combat is pulled off, you'll probably want to just avoid them. If you're looking for a much worse version of Resident Evil, or if this game holds some sort of nostalgia for you, god forbid, bless your childhood, <laughs> then you might be able to squeeze some enjoyment out of this lemon. For the rest of us, we're just sitting here wondering why this is a thing that needed to happen at all. Return to Mysterious Island. Pointy clicky, makey brain go loopy. Thank god this is the last game because I feel like I'm about to lose my shit. Luckily, it is a point and click. And this point and click is at least on par with yesterday's origins. Which means, I kind of like it. I, I, I'm almost in the realm of liking it. It might even be better than yesterday's origins considering its literary roots. This ain't no fucking Agatha Christie rag. This creation comes straight from the man himself, Jules Verne. You know, around the world in 80 days, 20,000 leagues under the sea, yeah, that Jules Verne. This is like if Jules Verne's mysterious island got lovingly gangbanged by Mist. The puzzles are actually good enough to be compared to Mist. If you enjoy point and click games, then this game manages to hold up on its own legitimately, which is a shocking way to wrap up this bundle full of ass drippings. It's a great story, which is owed to Jules Verne, but it is executed nicely and it actually manages not to fall apart into an intolerable, unplayable mess after being on the market since 2004. That's right. This fine looking game was released just one year after Curse. A little comparison here. Frame 1. Frame 2. Shit game. Decent game. While this isn't the sort of thing that I would normally choose, it is undoubtedly a well-built title that will manage to hold up for at least the foreseeable future. So, what do I think of this bundle? I think you should take your five dollars and light it on fucking fire! <laughs> this bundle is hardly worth it. I mean, I guess you can get Garfield Cart for the meme, uh, Yesterday's Origins, Toki, and Return to Mysterious Islands are passable, you know. Toki's probably the only one that I would ever actually play voluntarily. But yeah, overall this bundle is just a fucking disappointment. <laughs> this bundle's father left for milk when he was two years old and never came back. That joke strikes a little too close to home for me. I won't be using it again. <laughs> God, it is not every day that I physically hate almost every single game in the bundle. But this is... this is just the worst. We started out with Siberia 3 and somehow only went downhill from there, which is an achievement in itself, so... Good fucking job! <laughs> I sincerely hope that they have some better holdings in Bundlefest and that this was like, kind of a shit bundle that they just shoved out there to see what would happen, make a few extra dollars, because I'm sure somebody out there bought this. <laughs> maybe people who love point and click, maybe people who just love to, to cause themselves pain. But I definitely won't be buying this. I don't think you should buy it either. But if you do end up buying it, my affiliate link is in the uh, in the description and the comment. You might as well have some good come out of it and kick me uh, a nice shiny quarter while you're at it. God, this bundle's so terrible. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have an aneurysm. I really hope that the holdings of the next bundle are better. If they're if if. If it gets worse than this, then I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit talking about game bundles forever, because it's just going to make me angry. <laughs> oh, Lord. But anyways, friends, I'm going to get out of here. Stay away from this fucking bundle. <laughs> I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy the episode, please also check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. We've got giveaways on the Discord. And as always, I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers, Nico the Legend, Damon Darkstar, Radimus Cisco, and the lovely Lady Nyx. I will catch you guys in the next one. I gotta go take a cold shower after this one. I'm, I'm getting fucking heated here. <laughs> but thank you as always for listening, friends. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.